were sitting there at the family function. You don't want to go, but something in you decided to go anyway. You couldn't disappoint your mother, could you? But no sooner than you got here, you were reminded why you didn't want to come. The inappropriate comments, the hurtful remarks, and the feeling of sheer inadequacy. It's all too much at times. You love your family, but you hate being around them. You wonder, how could this be? Is it possible that you have a toxic family? If so, what do you need to do about it? Well, in today's episode, that's exactly what we're talking about. So sit back and hold tight as we dive into the seven ways to deal with toxic family members. Let's get started. Welcome to the Narcissistic Abuse Survivors Support Group, where we help survivors of narcissism live a better life. In today's episode, we uncover how to deal with toxic family members. But before we get started, I want to invite you to our family. And trust me, we are not toxic. By joining our group, you are sure to receive emotional support, practical advice, healing resources, expert guidance, personal growth, and confidentiality. If that sounds of interest to you and it can help your journey with healing through narcissism, please hit that subscribe button right now. Now let's get started on today's topic, how to deal with toxic family members. To effectively deal with toxic family members, setting boundaries is an essential step that can transform your interactions and protect your well-being. Begin by taking a deep introspective look at what behaviors trigger negative emotions or stress. Clearly define what you will and will not tolerate, considering both minor annoyances and more significant transgressions. This clarity helps you understand your own limits and prepares you to communicate them effectively. Once you have a solid grasp of your boundaries, the next step is to communicate them firmly and consistently. This means having honest conversations with your family members where you calmly but assertively explain your limits. Use I statements to express how certain behaviors affect you, such as I feel disrespected when my opinions are dismissed, rather than accusing or blaming them. This approach helps to minimize defensiveness and opens the door for healthier dialogue. Consistency is key. It's not enough to set boundaries once. You must reinforce them every time they are challenged. This might involve reminding family members of your limits or stepping away from interactions that cross your boundaries. Over time, your persistence will signal that you are serious about your needs and they should start to respect your space. Additionally, setting boundaries is not just about limiting negative interactions, but also about creating positive ones. Encourage behaviors that you find supportive and nurturing and express appreciation when family members respect your boundaries. This positive reinforcement can help shift the dynamics of your relationships towards more respectful and healthy interactions. If setting boundaries with toxic family members proves to be too challenging or ineffective, the next crucial step is to limit contact. Reducing the amount of time you spend with these individuals can significantly improve your mental and emotional well-being. This approach involves being intentional about when, where and how you interact with them to minimize the negative impact on your life. Firstly, assess the nature and frequency of your interactions with toxic family members. Identify situations or events that are particularly draining or harmful. Once you have a clear understanding, make a conscious decision to reduce your presence in these settings. For example, if family gatherings tend to be sources of conflict, consider attending less frequency or staying for shorter periods. By doing so, you protect yourself from prolonged exposure to negativity. Prioritizing mental health means taking control of your availability. Set specific times for communication and stick to them. For instance, you might decide to only answer calls or messages during certain hours, ensuring you have ample time for self-care and activities that bring you joy. This helps create a balance between maintaining family ties and safeguarding your well-being. When interaction is necessary, choose neutral or public locations where toxic behavior is less likely to occur. 
Meeting in a cafe or a park can diffuse tension compared to being in a confined space like a family home. This strategy not only limits potential conflicts, but also allows you to leave more easily if the situation becomes uncomfortable. It's also important to manage expectations. Be clear with yourself and others about what you can handle. Politely decline invitations to events that you know will be stressful and don't feel obligated to provide lengthy explanations. A simple, I'm sorry, I can't make it this time is sufficient. Remember, you are under no obligation to justify your need for space. In some cases, limiting contact might mean making a temporary or permanent break from certain family members. This can be a tough decision, but it's crucial to recognize when a relationship is causing more harm than good. Give yourself permission to distance yourself without guilt. Surround yourself with supportive friends and loved ones who respect your boundaries and contribute positively to your life. Limiting contact with toxic family members is about reclaiming your power and prioritizing your mental health. By consciously choosing when and how to interact with them, you reduce stress and create a healthier environment for yourself. This strategy, combined with self-care and support from positive relationships, can lead to significant improvements in your overall well-being. To do this effectively, you must learn to stay calm and detached from toxic family members. Staying calm and detached when dealing with toxic family members is essential for maintaining your emotional health and preventing further conflict. Keeping your emotions in check during interactions requires constant effort and self-awareness. Recognize the triggers that usually provoke you and prepare yourself mentally before engaging with toxic family members. When you feel your emotions rising, remind yourself to stay composed. Respond rather than react. Instead of getting drawn into arguments or emotional outbursts, practice active listening and speaking in a calm, measured tone. This approach not only helps you maintain your composure, but also prevents the situation from escalating. Incorporating mindfulness and breathing exercises into your daily routine can significantly enhance your ability to stay calm. Mindfulness techniques such as meditation help you stay present and focused, allowing you to manage stress more effectively. When faced with stressful interactions, take deep, slow breaths to center yourself. This simple practice can reduce anxiety and help you think more clearly. Visualization techniques like imagining a peaceful place or repeating a calming mantra can also be beneficial. Regularly practicing these exercises equips you with the tools to detach emotionally from toxic behaviors and maintain your inner peace, no matter how external circumstances affect you. By staying calm and detached, you protect your own mental health and create a buffer against negativity of toxic family members. Practicing self-care is also just as fundamental when dealing with toxic family members as it helps replenish your energy and maintain a positive mindset. Engage in activities that nourish your mind, body, and soul to counterbalance the stress and negativity you might experience. This could include reading a good book, listening to music, spending time in nature, or pursuing creative hobbies like painting or writing. These activities provide a mental escape and allow you to focus on things that bring you joy and fulfillment. By regularly engaging in such activities, you can create a protective buffer against the emotional toll of toxic interactions, ensuring that your sense of self remains intact and resilient. Prioritizing your well-being also means making time for exercises and relaxation. Physical activity, whether it's a brisk walk, a yoga session, or a gym workout can significantly reduce stress levels and improve your mood by releasing endorphins. Additionally, regular exercise contributes to better overall health, which can enhance your ability to cope with difficult family dynamics. Equally important is incorporating relaxing tape. Using I statements to communicate assertively offers significant benefits when dealing with toxic family members. This approach allows you to express your feelings and needs without resorting to blame or accusation, which can often lead to defensive responses and heightened conflict. For example, saying, I feel hurt when my opinions are dismissed is more constructive than, you never listen to me. I statements focus on your experience and emotions, fostering a more open and empathetic dialogue. This method helps to reduce understanding and promotes a clearer and more direct communication style 
avoiding the pitfalls of passive aggressive behavior. By articulating your feelings and needs assertively, you establish a respectful tone and create an environment where your boundaries and concerns are more likely to be understood and respected. This in turn can lead to healthier and more productive interactions, even in challenging family dynamics. Last, but certainly not least, know when to walk away. Knowing when to walk away from a toxic family relationship requires a deep understanding of your own well-being and boundaries. It involves recognizing when repeated efforts to establish healthy communication and boundaries have consistently failed. Sometimes, despite your best intentions and efforts, a relationship may remain destructive and detrimental to your mental and emotional health. In such cases, making the decision to cut ties can be a tough yet necessary step towards protecting yourself. The decision is not taken lightly but it's crucial for maintaining your self-respect, peace of mind, and overall happiness. It allows you to prioritize your own needs and cultivate healthier relationships that contribute positively to your life. Knowing when to walk away from a toxic family relationship is a deeply personal and courageous decision. It requires acknowledging when the relationship is no longer serving your well-being despite your efforts to mend it. Consciously facing negativity, manipulation, or emotional abuse can take a severe toll on your mental and emotional health. It's about recognizing your own worth and realizing that you deserve to be treated with respect and kindness, even if it means distancing yourself from family members. Ending a toxic relationship with a family member is often a last resort after exhausting all other options for reconciliation and setting boundaries. It involves prioritizing your own happiness and mental peace over maintaining a dysfunctional connection. While it may come with feelings of guilt or sadness, it can also bring immense relief and liberation from toxic dynamics. This decision empowers you to create a healthier environment for yourself and opens up opportunities for personal growth and nurturing relationships elsewhere. Everyone deserves to be surrounded by love and treat it with dignity, qualities often absent in toxic family dynamics. By choosing to prioritize your well-being, you pave the way for healing and personal growth. Remember, it's okay to seek support and guidance along this journey. If you're navigating the challenges of narcissistic abuse or toxic family relationships, consider downloading our Narcissistic Abuse Survivors Workbook in the description. It's packed with valuable resources, exercises, and support to help you heal, set boundaries, and reclaim your life. Together, we can empower each other to build healthier relationships and thrive. Your journey to healing starts now. Peace and blessings, Dr. O.